Earlier this year, Erwin Van Vinnecom was welcomed to Indiana University as the next head coach of the Indiana women's soccer team. And today, we get to sit down with him for the first time to hear his thoughts on the position, the team, and the future of Indiana women's soccer. Erwin, thanks you so much for joining me today. I know you're a busy guy. Obviously, yeah. this is the recruiting season, so thanks for making time for us here. Thank you for having me. really appreciate it. I want to start off. First head coaching gig, Division One here at Indiana. Yeah. What made this the right fit? Um, I, you know, I think it's a, a couple of different reasons. Um, I think the university itself, what it has to offer, um, from a from an uh, academic and uh, athletic side, it I think it has everything um, a student athlete wants in a, in in an experience in a college experience. I think that is amazing, and I think the resources, uh, the conference we're in. I think it has everything, so uh, I'm super excited. Now, you were actually a head coach for several years for the Women's Premier Soccer League here in the United States, early 2010s. How does that experience translate over to Division One and more specifically the Big Ten Conference? Um, in all honesty, not so much as, as maybe some other experiences. I think some of my assistant coach experiences where I, you know, I had different roles within, you know, within my position that I've learned more from and, and especially working with some of the people I've worked with over the over the last couple of years. I think I think that has, has taught me more than um, seven, eight years ago when I was just managing a team and didn't really have feedback. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, like I said, the, the experience learning from uh, from some of the head coaches I work for is probably uh, um, my main influence. You come here, you bring up how you come here from the ACC, come from Duke, one of the top programs in the country. Yeah. Talk to me about that experience in the ACC as being assistant. I know you had a very powerful role in game management and the actual game itself. Yeah. Talk to me about how you look to bring knowledge from the ACC over to the Big Ten and how that can provide huge gains for this Indiana University soccer team. Yeah, I just think that um, the experience of knowing what a team at, at the top level should look like. And, and we're talking about a team, I think the individuals. So what a, what a player that wants to compete, or what, you know, it should be competing for a national championship, what a, what a player is made of from a mental, from a tactical, technical and physical component. I think that knowledge of, of trying to understand like what players will perform at a top level uh, and going through a four year cycle with Duke, I think I've, that's, that's the most, because you don't know really, if you haven't been there, you don't know. At some point, you have to recognize, okay, that those are the those are the uh, the student athletes that are going to help us compete at the top level. So, so you come here, spend four years at Duke, rack up a great resume, bring in great players, have great records, and go on and win big games in the tournament. And then you get a call from Fred Glass. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about what the interview process was like. What did Fred Glass say to you when he called and said he wanted you to be the next head coach here? Yeah, that was pretty special. That was, uh, um, you know, honestly that. I was, when they told me, hey, we're, within the next week, we'll probably, uh, you know, you hear something. Um, I think that week was probably the longest in my, uh, in my life. Um, and basically sitting by my phone, and then, uh, you know, Bloomington number comes up. So, you know, like, okay, let's go. But I knew uh, as soon as I was here for the interview, and I had a great feeling. Uh, I, I think I knew they were going to hire me, to be honest. I had a great feeling with everybody, and, and also with Mr. Glass. So I, I just had a... I had a good feeling about it, but it was still a stressful week. And, and, and when he called, you know, I didn't even care what he had to say. Let's go. You know, that was, it was a special moment. So just like from the get go, you were ready. You were I was ready. ready. Yeah. When I, you know, I, I didn't really, I knew in the end, I, I've been in once before, but I, you know, once going through the interview and everybody showing, showing me what, uh, what Indiana has to offer, um, you know, I knew that if I had the, if I got the chance, I would take it and, and go with it. For sure. now, when you were hired here, uh, Indiana University reached out to your former coach, uh, head coach at yeah. Robbie Church. Yeah. Um, I want to read a quote he said. He said, and I quote here, Irwin is one of the top minds in the game. He's a brilliant teacher of the game, and his knowledge of the game is outstanding, and his ability to change throughout the course of the game is fantastic. goes on later to say it's a home run hire for Indiana, and I think Irwin will lead them to great heights. When you hear somebody you worked with yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis say that about you, yeah. what does that feel like, especially going into a job like this? Uh, yeah, special because th that's a that's a man that has done has been in the business for so long and has done has done really really well. And uh, Robbie and I became really really close over the, over those four years. And uh, yeah, it's special. I I think he gave me the opportunity. You know, there's a lot of it, it, you know assistant coaches in the country that are assistants. Right? The head coach make the decisions, and and you might aid in a little bit here and there. But he gave me. 
a pretty much a free role with the with the soccer side of things at, at Duke, and I think that has has helped me develop into into uh, you know into the coach I'm now, and also the person I'm now, and and learning from him uh, at that aspect as well. So I think uh, he's definitely set me up well to to do what I do now. So I want to point out one thing about your departure from Duke. When yeah. you were talking to coaches, loved ones at in North Carolina, you said. I'm only going to leave this program on one condition. What was that condition, and why was it? Uh, for a special opportunity. Yeah, really. And ultimately, you know, we're. I'm in this. I'm in this business for a lot of reasons. I love coaching. I love the game. I love working with student athletes, and I, I love providing an opportunity that uh, that sets them up for the rest of life. Right. I want. To, I want this to be the hardest, but the the most rewarding four years of their life and setting them up. Uh, but I also love to win, and I. I I want uh, I want this program. I want uh, my coaching staff, myself. We want to win the national championship, and uh, I wasn't going to leave, you know, for any opportunity. And if uh, I had to feel that it had all the potential to be a national champion one day, whenever that may be, and uh, I think Indiana has, has that opportunity. Um, now it's it's a process, and it's going to take some time. Uh, but I do think you know there's no excuses for myself and the coaching staff and the players to. To, to not get there at some point. Now you came in, you had an opportunity to meet the women's team back in December, right before they left for break. What was the reaction like? Were they welcoming? Were they excited? To yeah, see they you? were awesome. Yeah, they, they were awesome. I think uh, it was uh, obviously any team that's going through a coaching change, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a hard time. It's like a little bit nerve wracking. I think they're waiting to see who's getting hired. I'm sure they're getting some information about candidates filtered through. Um, so it's a it's a tough time, but I I think they're excited. Hopefully they're still as excited as they were then. But you know I I, I think it's a I think it's a good vibe. I think um, honestly, I, you know, we'll, we'll be changing things. Things will be different, which I think is a little bit of an adjustment for some people. I think the expectations and the standards will be higher, which is hard, right? It's it's uh it's hard to create new relationships. They some of them had a status with the with the past team, and that status is. I don't want to say gone, but I'm going off what I'm seeing. So um, yeah, it's it's a it's a little bit of a transition period, but it, it'd, be, it'd be a great one. And I, they were so welcoming. Yeah. You mentioned the a lot in our first talk we had. You mentioned a lot about work ethic, hard work. Is that what you want the identity of this Indiana University team to be? Or I think any successful team, operation, business, whatever uh, is ba the foundation is that right? And I told them, and I saw this from. Uh, um, Gina, the the the, um, the UConn basketball coach, he's like, we're not here to coach your energy and enthusiasm and work rate, right? I'm gonna coach you on the technical and technical aspects. So, and I, I truly believe in that, and we won't, right? If if we have, we if we have to back play as to work hard, or to be enthusiastic about the game they love, we're doing something wrong. So I think finding those players that that love the game, want to put the work in, and, and enjoy putting the work in. I think that's gonna be the foundation, and everything. Everything comes from that. Um, if that's our identity, maybe not so much. I think there's more to it. I think that's our base. You know, so uh, going through a training session and work hard is is that's it. That's a standard. But there's way more to performing well. So first year here at Indiana, I, I know coaches are always focused on what can we do this year, what what with the group we have, yeah. recruits coming in. First year as coach here at Indiana, what's a goal that you have that you want to see this team reach? Um, you know, we, I think it's hard for me to set goals. I've not worked with the team yet, um, and, and I, I won't. I, I have said, you know, within the next six years, we will, will win the national championship. Um, and, but I think short-term goals, I think, uh, are very small and, and um, are going to be little, little building blocks for the future. So it's hard for me to tell, you know, tell you what, um, what we're going to do next year. I just don't know what we have yet. I'm still... You know, watching some of the, the the players that are coming in in the next recruiting class, um, so we're still working on that piece. But come come back to me in uh, four or five months, and I give you more information. So, national championship in six years—that's a lofty goal. Yeah. What's the what's the game plan to get that done? Um, like, like I said, I think it's little building blocks. I think I know what needs to happen. Uh, it's just every day put in the work and, and and get better every day in all aspects of the program. Um, you know, obviously I want to continue. Uh, I think what they have done in the classroom and 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 off the field, I want to continue that uh, that culture. But I think the on the field stuff, I think we uh, 
we got to improve and, and just get better every day. From a, I think, I think them understanding and, and our coaching staff understanding what hard work really is, because there's diff different levels of that. And I think just reaching every day, we're reaching new heights and we're making the bar, the standard, a little bit higher every day. I think that's, that's going to be it. I want to ask this because I think every coach is kind of different. You know, some coaches, you know, you might get a Tom Allen or Archie where their emphasis is recruiting in state. Yeah. Uh, you get a lot of different things. With you, what are you looking for in your next recruit to come to Indiana? What qualities do you want to see in them? Well, they have to be good people. Good families, good people, first of all, because we can have the most talented players come here, but if they're um, not well raised or if they become an issue, really quick, then there's no benefit for anybody. So trying to figure out what kind of, what, what kind of people they are and uh, their values, their family values, I think is super important. And you talk about some of the philosophy of other coaches in recruiting, we're doing the same thing. We'll, we'll try to keep the best players in the state to come here, um, and then the best players in the Midwest to come here. Um, and then obviously, you know, the country is, is, is pretty big, so, uh, and the world is pretty big. So, uh, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to get the best players, but Obviously, we want to, you know, players that uh, or student athletes that love this place are are going to work just a little bit harder, and uh, so I, I think we want to keep the best players in Indiana in Indiana at Indiana University, and um, we want to keep the players in the Midwest also, you know, coming here. Um, Final question here, and I, I, I really do like this question because I think it's an opportunity for you to talk to the fans, talk to opposing coaches, talk to your future players. Yeah. When you. you you have the chance right now to talk to them. Yeah. Your opposing coaches, players, fans. What do you want them to? What do you want them to know about this Indiana team that's coming? Um, uh, first of all, I, I want players that consider, or student athletes that consider coming here and, and playing here. Um, I think we're going to offer the best of everything. I think we're going to be a uh, obviously an academic institution that's going to provide a world class education. But then I think on the field we're going to provide the same thing. So I think we're going to provide something that, for, for players that want to develop in a college atmosphere, win games, have a great time doing it, but also maybe go play pro, go play overseas. We want to you know, have that culture of, hey, we're going to have people with, um, you know, graduate from the Kelly School of Business or go to medical school or go to law school, but also have the opportunity to go play pro for a couple of years. Um, so I think that for, for the future student athletes, I think that culture we want to have, we want to have this professional atmosphere Within, within the values of the university. Um, and for fans, I think throughout the next couple months and, and next season, I think you will, you'll see a team that will fight and, and keep fighting for every, for every ball and every minute of the game. And I think you'll see improvement each, game we're, each time we're on the field. And, uh, you know, obviously it's a process. Um, but I, I, trust me, this is going to be something special. And I think fans want to be part of this. What do you want to say to opposing coaches? Oh, that's a tricky one. You, you're, trying, you're trying to get me here. <laughs> you're going to face some um, of the toughest coaches in the yeah. conference and some of the entire nation. Yeah, no, uh, looking, looking forward to the games. And uh, uh, obviously, it's a great league with some great coaches and, and a great history. But, uh, um, you know, I think we're very confident in our coaching staff and, and, uh, and the players we have. So um, looking forward to some good challenges and, uh, and, and especially challenges you know, going through the next couple of years. But again, ton of respect for the coaches in this league, but let's go. Well, Coach, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Best of luck. And Thank you. You're number one. Thank you.